Good morning, and welcome to worship at the First Congregational Church of Clarendon. Today is Sunday, May 17th, and I'm going to say if there's one scripture that we have been hearing over and over that's so meaningful over the last few months, it is words from Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, those who have been called according to his purpose. These words have so much meaning for us that, that are helping us to continue to trust in our God despite what all the things are going on, to, to know that God has a good purpose for us today, tomorrow, and every day. Because there is a lot of things that we just trust in on a daily basis. We don't give it a whole lot of thought. We trust that when we're driving our car and the cars on the opposite intersection have a red light, it is safe for us to drive through and keep going. We trust that when we have a letter to mail and we stick it in the mailbox, that it's going to get to its intended destination. But those kinds of things are fine, but do we trust completely that God has our back, that God is going to do the right thing, the good things for us that are intended? And, and how much can we trust that God will guide us, will teach us, will forgive us when we've messed up? This morning, through our time of worship, I hope you will consider how you may grow in your trust in the Lord, despite how your day or weeks have been going. Our music to this morning, I'm uh, so glad to be able to say that Caroline Mansfield is again playing the piano accompaniment for us as we, uh, Laura and Aubrey and myself, singing Trust and Obey. We also have a very special ending to our service this morning, and that is a video which has been given to us courtesy of the United Church of Christ, a lovely song that they have compiled for us called I Believe. I hope you will enjoy both these two pieces of music that will enhance our worship today. Trust and obey. Then in 
worship now as we join together as God's people in prayer. Let's pray. Dear God and Father of us all, teach us to put our trust in you. Help us perceive your amazing goodness, even if the circumstances we're in right now don't seem so good. You are not a genie, existing only to fulfill our every desire. That's trust, only until the good things run out. You are not some vengeful guy ready to shoot arrows in us every time we mess up. Why would we trust in someone like that? We trust you, Lord, because your character is the same as it has always been and always will be. You love us and want the best for us. You always have. You always will. Gracious God, let us honor you as we put our trust in you day by day. We want to listen to your word in scripture, to learn to apply it to all we do through the good times and the bad. It's not easy to love when we're discouraged or feel as though we've been dealt a bad hand. But it helps to know you will not abandon us, but will continue to encourage us despite the setbacks and disappointments in life. You know, Father, those who are having a hard time right now, those who are worried about a second surge in cases of the coronavirus, those who are trying to recoup financial losses from the past few months, those who are worried about family members on the front lines of caring for others. We lift up to you all these persons. We lift up to you those on our prayer list. You know their needs. You know how we love them. Thank you, Father, for how your spirit speaks to us, for the way that your word speaks to our souls. And grant, Lord, that we may have a growing faith, a deepening love, that we may not only confess with our lips that we love you, but we have hearts that believe you have sent us Jesus, and he has risen from death. Help us to see the world of miracles that you have prepared for us and the promise that one day we will reach the kingdom of heaven. Keep us close in your embrace, dear God, for we would give you our trust as we seek to live each day according to your will. Strengthen us as a body of believers and as your church to the glory of your name. In all things, may we give you the praise, for you showed us the full depth of your love in sending us your Son, Jesus. We pray as Jesus taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today comes from the book of Proverbs. We're reading from chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Hear these words of the Lord. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win good favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. May God bless our reading and understanding of his holy word. Amen. Well, these last few months have been stressful, no doubt. We will continue to face uncertainty in the coming weeks as businesses begin to reopen. We wonder when we can safely open the church and allow for our people to be safe as they come here to worship. In the face of all that's difficult, we need God's guidance, and we need to focus on God's word. We have to put our trust in the Lord. For God is our sure rock, our foundation, even if everything else seems to be crumbling. So this morning's scripture lesson from Proverbs gives us some good advice. And it begins saying, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. And there's probably never a bad time to read scripture. But, but I'm going to say even now, and especially now, um, continue on or, or begin if it hasn't been your usual habit, that you will read scripture every day. Um, start from the book of Romans. Start from the, one of the Gospels or maybe Paul's letters. Uh, maybe you read a full chapter a day. Maybe it's only a few verses. But whatever you read, it will be just an opening to you of God's word, allowing you to experience anew, fresh each day, what the Lord has to say to you and allow you to have strength to get through whatever is before you. Maybe you can use our devotions, or maybe you could go online. Uh, Uversion has tremendous resources for Bible studies and devotional readings. Uh, some are long, some are very short. But whatever it is that you do, uh, let there be God's Word. Act it as a vaccine to, to help you be strengthened as you remember all of God's promises. God first says, keep my commands in your heart from our scripture this morning. One website I found listed 72 instances that have passages urging us to follow God's commands. Uh, many of them are in the Old Testament, of course, but there are many as well in the New Testament. And I just want to share a few of them with you. Uh, Jesus says in Luke 11, 28, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. From 1 John 5, 3, this is love for God, to obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. And from the book of James, do not merely listen to the Lord and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So, so as we are engaged in the word, as we are actively trying to follow God's commands, Jesus says we are blessed. Um, first John says, this is how we know that God loves us and that we love God. It's like a demonstration purposes. 
And then, of course, from James, don't listen to the word, do it. Make it part of all you do in a given day. God says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So ponder these words. Even if everything else is going down, let love and faithfulness never leave you. God is love. I mean, that's God's essential character. That's who God is to the core. And, and so, because that's who God is, God's love, God's faithfulness will never fail. We, however, choose whether to love or not, whether to remain faithful or not. So every day as you pray, pray that you may be loving, that you may be faithful, um, that you may reach out and care for whomever God has placed in your path. I was uh, actually asked to conduct a funeral this week for a man who had Down syndrome. I did not know him, but from all that I heard about him, he was a very loving man. He loved to share hugs with everyone he met. And even if he got angry, he'd be quick to say, I'm sorry. And, and I shared with them words from John 1 John 4, 7 to 8, saying, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And this man certainly was blessed in having the gift of sharing love with everyone he met. Well, maybe you noticed, um, going back to our scripture lesson, you may have noticed that in Proverbs, God says, bind your love and faithfulness around your neck. Okay, so if I were going to take that literally, I'd say, oh, I guess I'm supposed to wear a cross necklace. Uh, back in the day, they would wear what they call phylacteries on their upper arm that would remind them of God's law and, and the, the need to remain faithful. But, but you know what, even more than these physical reminders that we could wear, God is asking us to perform acts of love and faithfulness in ways that are visible to other people. Okay, so it seems fair game these days to criticize our elected officials. And yes, maybe some of them deserve it. But can we refrain in not, from not spreading the criticism further? Because, you know, there are so many positive, wonderful things that we can do, even while we're sequestered at home, that may be considered acts of love. Be creative. Uh, figure out what it is you can do for others. Because those are those outward expressions of love that also are an inward delight for your soul. Isn't it great? I heard those words from Ray Pritchard, and I wanted to share those with you. An outward expression of love that is an inward delight to your soul. Because, yeah, we feel so good when we do things that we know are of benefit to others. Maybe it's writing cards. Maybe it's talking on the phone or making masks or any number of good things. Having video chats with your children or grandchildren to keep them entertained. Um, all those ways that we keep in touch with one another. And I say especially for those who live alone, who may be really longing for more social interaction. God says, may love and faithfulness never leave you. Because God's love and faithfulness will always be there for you. No, we don't deserve God's love, but we receive it anyway. Because God loves us so much as to send his only son Jesus to us, even allowing him to die so that Jesus would take upon himself all of our sins. God's faithful love is made manifest 
in Jesus. And, and that same love that we receive from God is the same love that we are to share with other people. And it will change us and it will change others with whom we are sharing that kind of love in visible ways. Now to go on, God says, do not forget the Lord, but keep the Lord's commands. Let love and faithfulness never leave you, but bind them among your necks for all to see. Now we come to verses 5 and 6. These are probably two of the most beloved verses in the Bible. And, and they go like this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. One has called these two verses a short course in knowing the will of God. Um, if we will trust in God, if we will believe that God knows what's best for us, we'll not try to second guess God, well, we can just rest easy. Because no matter what happens, if we trust in God, then we will never be left high and dry. I want to look at a few essential words within these verses. Um, trust. Uh, the dictionary defines trust as a belief in the reliability or truth or strength of someone or something uh, or accepting the truth of a statement without needing further investigation. Well enough. In Hebrew, however, the word trust carries a much stronger connotation. Uh, it means like to rest with your full weight on something. I mean, total dependence. That's the, the weightiness of that kind of trust. It's like God is your firm mattress on whom you may just rest completely. And as a contrast, then, Proverbs says, do not lean on your own understanding. Okay, so we could lean against the doorway. We could lean against uh, the countertop when we're in the kitchen. We could lean any old place. We're taking off some of the weight, even though we're standing on our own two feet, or maybe only one. If you use a walker, if you use a cane, those are excellent means of secondary support. Okay, that's that leaning process going on. And, and so Proverb cautions us not to lean on our own understanding. Okay, so when we are not leaning on our own understanding, well, it's something we want to do. We want to take charge of our own lives. We want to trust in our own cognate abilities, our reasoning skills to solve problems. We want to be in charge of our day, the kind of decisions that we make, but not to lean on our own understanding. What this says to me is that as good as it is to use your brains, um, as, as much as it's important that we should organize our day, make plans, do have goals, just don't depend on them completely. Don't let them be your sole support. It is better to trust in the Lord than it is to lean on your own abilities to get through the day. Okay? I've been reading a book, actually, that's um, it was in our church library, uh, one that was donated by Corrine's dad. It's about Josh McDowell. He was instrumental in the organization Campus Crusade for Christ. Josh was a student at Wheaton College when Bill Bright came to speak with the students then. Bill's talked about our need to trust in the Lord's guidance. Now he told Josh there were three groups of people basically. Those who do not believe in Christ, those who believe or profess their faith in Christ but they go off their own way, and the third group who put their trust in God through the Holy Spirit to let God be in charge. We can call this putting God on the throne. Who is the center of your life? Who calls the game plays? Is it you or is it God? Do you trust in God or do you lean on your own understanding? 
And now we come to, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Because I think trust has to be more than just an intellectual response. There's that sense that we have to live out the trust that we have. Um, think about it. If trust is faith in action, showing our faith, demonstrating our faith in the way that we live. Yeah, no doubt a lot of what's in the current situation is completely out of our control. We have no idea what the future will bring. But we are blessed when we realize it's not out of God's control. And we may trust in the Lord as we allow God to direct our paths in ways that give God the glory. God is asking us to trust in him, even though we cannot see beyond the next dip in the road. To trust. God has a good purpose for us no matter what is going on right now. And we have to trust as we continue to put our faith in him that that good purpose will be revealed. I think of the parable that Jesus once told about uh, an unfruitful fig tree. And the owner asked the gardener, why shouldn't he cut the tree down? Because, you know, it's not bearing any good fruit. The gardener said, He'll just dig around it a little while this year, give it some extra care, and maybe in another year, it's going to be fruitful. I think in the same way, we may think we are in an unfruitful time right now. But as we trust in the Lord, we may see that our sacrifices we are making now are going to produce fruit, fruit that we can't even imagine what it's going to look like. But it was fruit that will come as we trust in the Lord and give our lives unto him. Trust. It's but one step at a time. Moving ahead according to the best of one's ability, according to what God would say is right. You know, if we're out in the dark night and the shadow, we have a flashlight in our hand, the flashlight's only going to shine a beam a short way ahead. Beyond that, we can't see anything. Those who trust in the Lord can take the next step, remain in the light that God gives us for the moment, and then take the next step. Again, obedient to God's commands, endeavoring in all cases to do God's will, trusting in him and not leaning on our own understanding. May God be enthroned in your life as you put your whole trust in him. Amen. It is good that we may be together each week. I long for the day when we may safely be back together as God's people. But until then, hear these words from Psalm 20. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. May we find our trust in him and there regain our peace now and always in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God's peace be with you. Have a blessed week until we see you again. Amen. Show.